So today I wanted to show you a bit more about ray tracing. So ray tracing has become all the buzz these days, but the question I have to you is when did ray tracing really start getting good? Now, I heard about ray tracing in the mid 2010s. That was around when graphics cards became good enough to do this stuff real time. But when, when did it really, really set off, right? And I wanna show you this, this video of the first recursive ray tracer. Now look at that. I think the quality of the actual image may give it away. But this came out in 1979 by a guy called J. Turner Witted. And today I want to go over how this works. My memory of hearing about ray tracing was in the 80s because I'm quite old. Yeah. Um, but it was like future. It was like, you know, it's like, what do you call it? Science fiction. Back yes. Then, right? Yeah, yeah. It's because they didn't have the technology to actually implement any of this, really. So for, for that video there, that took them weeks, if not longer, just to do that one video that we could render in seconds, which I think shows how far we've really come. Um, but, but, but what's really cool is that the base algorithm is, is still the same. Obviously they built upon it, made it quicker, blah, blah, but the, the actual logic is the same, which I think is really, really cool. So previously um, we spoke about ray tracing, um, how it worked and how it compares to rasterization. Why, why do we use this compared to rasterization? And, and the, the, the reason that we use it is because it can handle more complex lighting effects. The first sort of algorithm that came out was ray casting, which is essentially shoot a ray out, hit something, return the color, right? Makes sense. If you want to do, let's say this table, dead easy, shoot a ray out from the camera, bang, that's white. Check anything in the way, no, that's, that's fine, nothing in the way of that light. Calculate your, your, your lighting, that's your color, bang, easy peasy, right? But what if we have something a little bit strange like this. I don't actually know what this is. I just found it on the side. <laughs> but it's I'm a real caffeine addict's coffee yeah, pot or something. It's I don't know. absolutely massive. But if, we, if I put it up to the screen here, you see how the light is making um, that uh, image behind look really weird. And, and the reason that's happening is because there's some refraction happening. The light is entering this pot. It's, it's changing its angle and it's exiting um, at a different angle and it, and it looks rather strange. And there's a few reflections and stuff happening in there as well. So if you're just going to shoot one ray out, you can't, you can't do that because the, the, the way that it, it works is you shoot a ray out, it goes in one direction, returns, right? So now we need to do something a bit more complicated, which is recursive ray tracing, okay? Now, I believe there is a video on this channel about recursion, isn't there? There definitely is. There's one called, What on Earth is Recursion? Well, there you go. I think that's... <laughs> if you want to know uh, in detail about recursion, then go ahead and have a look at that video. But essentially, it's if you have a function which, is, which does a specific thing, in this case, traces array, that function can call itself and, uh, in this case, shoot another array off. Um, and, and the functions call themselves, call themselves, and eventually it'll get to a point where they'll return, and then that value is passed back for all the functions, um, and then you get the result that you want. I want you to bear with me here, because this may be a little complicated, but I'll go over some examples of how, how it works um, in 3D, and then hopefully it all, all sort of makes sense. So I've called this TR, trace ray. I'm gonna call it TR when I draw it, just for simplicity, but essentially, we have this, and this whole thing here is, is the function. So we enter the function here, and I'm going to draw a triangle in 3D space. Imagine this is our scene, simple triangle. So we calculate if this ray has collided with anything. Is a black line the ray there? Yeah, yeah, black line's the ray, red triangle is, is a, just a triangle. And then you've got to ask yourself, what's the surface that it collided with? One thing that can happen is that your ray has hit the triangle. That, that's the, probably the most common thing, right? Shoot a ray out, it hits something. Um, if you do that, you just calculate, apologies for my really bad handwriting, calculate your light color. That's the way we described it in the previous video. So shoot a ray out, let's say this table, check if it's occluded, i.e. can it get to the light? Yes, light is hitting that, um, that, that point here. Um, calculate what the color should be based on the light. You can use like blind fong, I think it's called, and there are other ways of doing it. Um, and then return. And that's how you get that, that color, dead simple. And then that returns out of the function here. So I'm gonna do that. Cool, so that's one, one thing you can do. Another one, 
is if, I've just realized I've left myself a lot of space here. Let's just say whoop, that that ray doesn't hit the triangle. It shoots off into empty space. And that's not just this triangle, it's any triangle in your scene. It doesn't hit anything. Then just return the background color. Because it's not, it's like if you shot a ray off into the sky, it's gonna go infinitely, it's not gonna hit anything. So just return whatever you set as your background color. It can be blue for the sky, black for the night. It doesn't matter, whatever you want. So now this is where we get <laughs> to the really interesting stuff. Right, so let's draw another triangle. What happens if you shoot a ray out and it reflects off here? Now, what we've set up here is that if it hits anything, um, a, a solid object, it returns a light color. But if you hit like a, a mirror, there is no color to a mirror, it's just bouncing off, right? So what you do is you call trace ray again, but with the direction of the new reflected ray. And then what will happen is that will then start this whole function again. And let's say you have a, a reflection that then hits something, it will go, right, have I hit anything, blah, blah. Yes, I've hit something, return that light color, that then becomes the value that is returned from this function, and then you can just return that again. And this is how mirrors work, because you shoot a ray out, it bounces, it returns, it returns. And I'll go over a bit more how, how that works. Now, this is the most complicated thing I'm gonna go into, which is refractions. Now, as I said, light is entering this um, massive coffee pot or whatever this is, and it's refracting through it and it's exiting, but it's also doing something more than that. Some of the light is reflected as well. And what we do there, so let me just draw this. This is, let's say, what happens if um, it's refracted through, actually, apologies, it should just be that part. What you then do is you take the Fresnel of the refracted ray and the reflected ray. Now, two rays go into this function, it returns the amount of light, just like how what Calculate Light does, just how um, calling the base function will eventually give you. When it comes to coding, there's probably loads of different implementations but what the Fresnel's equations are trying to do is they're trying to say how much each ray contributes to the, the, the final light color now imagine you're at the beach okay and you're looking at the ocean if you're looking horizontally at the sea you won't be able to see into the ocean but if you then walk into the ocean and you look down you should be able to see your toes and the sand because suddenly a lot of that light is, re is refracted through the water so it all depends on where you're looking at that object. And this is what that Fresnel equation is trying to do. I've simplified this a lot. I'm not gonna go into much more detail on it, but that's how that works. So this is how the basic algorithm works. Obviously, um, more advancements have been made to it, changes have been made, but essentially this is the underlying thing. It's, it's about this trace ray function calling itself at certain situations. So. Should we go into some examples of how that works, right? So let's create a scene here for reflection, right? So we have a camera here. Let's say we have one mirror here, one mirror here, and a red square here, and a light source here. So how would we render this? If you were ray casting, you'd shoot a ray off here. It would hit the mirror. That's it because it can't call itself again. It would hit something and that's it. And that's not how mirrors work. Well, if you're recursively ray tracing, so let's, let's actually draw the function call. So we've called TR once, it's hit that. We then go, ah, we've got a reflection. We need to call TR again. So this calls TR there and a ray bounces off here. Brilliant. Ah, we've hit another mirror. Let's call TR again. And that goes up here. It's hit that object. And what we do, just as similar to Raycast, we calculate the light. Um, we go, ah, that's not occluded by anything. It's not a shadow. And then we just calculate the Blin Fong um, lighting or whatever lighting uh, model you want to use. So that's now red. Brilliant. Red here. Now that function goes, ah, oh, I've calculated the light. I'm going to return, right? So that goes up there. So now um, it's said, oh, okay. I've got red color, I'm gonna return. Uh, and then that passes that red color to this function, which then terminates, returns, which passes the red color to this function, which then returns to the renderer and you get a red pixel. That's how it works. So 
Reflection's dead easy. It's just bouncing off and calling Trace Ray every time you hit a reflection, which then returns the color as it goes. So that's not too bad. Now let's get to the real, real meat and two veg of this, which is the refractions. So let's say we have another scene here with a camera and you have a glass sphere here. I don't know why I said it like that, sphere, with a red square here, but also, let's say we have a green triangle over here. All right, and I'll get to why in a second. So, and let's say we've called trace ray here. So, we shoot off the ray there. Ah, it's hit um, this sphere. What we need to do now is calculate a, a reflective ray and a refractive ray. So let's do that first. The refractive ray goes into this object like this, right? Just like this, enters through there. And also we get a reflective ray, which goes down here, let's say, right? It's not a perfect reflection, but just, just bear with me. Um, now this ray, um, uh, let's do the function calls. This, this is the refractive ray, and we'll say this is the reflective ray here. So we've called two new versions of this, right? Um, this ray now has to leave that sphere, so it calls a reflective ray. Let's say that one goes down there. And um, another refractive ray, ray, and that goes out like this. So we've got two here. Now, let's work out the values. This ray hits that square and let's say your light is here nothing's in the way of the light you calculate it it's red brilliant so we know that that's red there this reflective ray will bounce around inside do some weird stuff but in the end it doesn't hit anything but if we're gonna do uh, model that let's say it bounces off there which bounces off there which bounces off there it would look something like that dot 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 we'll get to that in a second that returns nothing, let's say. It goes empty space, right? Now, we use the Fresnel's calculation to get the, the um, mix of both of that, and we'll say, yeah, that's, that's red in this instance, right? I don't, I, I'm not going to go into what the actual thing would be, but let's just say it's red here. Um, but we have this reflective ray here. That hits this triangle. Ah, brilliant. That would be green. Calculate, nothing in the way. That's green. And then the final color will be a mix of those two colors, depending on how you're looking at it. And let's just say, I'm just gonna be, let's just say it's like that, or oh, the green really overpowers the red there, but you, you, you get what I'm trying to say. And what, what would happen when you render is um, you get, you'd be able to mostly see the red, but you may see a tint of, of green, or you may just see green with a tint of, of red, depending on how you look at it. Like I said about the ocean, it depends on where you're looking at um, the, the re refractive substance there. So that's how you do refraction, is you'll shoot off a refractive ray and a reflective ray, and those will then go off and do stuff, but they'll eventually hit something, hopefully, and then return the values, and then you get that final pixel color, which in this instance is a mix between those two. So. Now, I mentioned here that this ray does some crazy stuff, right? It will do something maybe like that. Um, and that will just create an infinite tree, right? A an infinite load of function calls. Let's say we have a scene here of a camera, a uh, glass uh, cube, two mirrors. Okay, let's, let's, let's do this, right? We shoot off a ray here. It hits that which calls a reflective and a refractive ray. That reflective ray goes off and bounces again, and that may bounce several times, dot, dot, dot. That then goes into, that refractive ray goes into there. Oh, it calls a reflective ray and a refractive ray. That then goes there, that then goes there, that again. Crazy town, right? And what you get is infinite recursion, and then your computer blows up right? <laughs> it doesn't really uh, blow up, it would just blue screen or something like that, right? Um, not good. We, we, we don't want infinite recursion because then nothing ever will, will return. You'll never get that pixel color because nothing ever returns. It's constantly calling itself and calling itself and you get a, a function stack after function stack and then you're, you run out of memory. 
So how do we stop this, right? Well, when we call the trace ray function, we pass in how many bounces there have been so far. How deep is this tree of recursion? So this is one, this is two, this is three. And then when you get to, let's say, between three and five, call it, yeah? There's, there's no, no point doing any more, at least for real-time rendering. If you're, if you're, let's say, a big animation company, you don't really care how many bounces it does, right? Because you'll have in loads of GPUs, and it doesn't matter how long it takes to return the value, right? But you always need some sort of base case, it's called, um, where you say enough's enough, because then you don't want a situation like this where it goes on forever. So let's get back to um, J. Turner Witted's recursive ray tracing. You see how at the bottom of the glass there, the light acts strangely towards the, the edges, um, but towards the center, it, look, it looks more, more, more stable there. But this is the really, 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 really cool part, is that if you look at the top here, can you see this, some of that checkerboard being reflected there? And the reason why is because it's that reflective ray that we shot off, it's the payoff, right? You can refract through it, but you also reflect, and some of that, um, ref the, the reflective rays are hitting the checkerboard. And that is why there's a mix of blue, because the, the, the ray's being shot off, it's returning the background color, which is blue, there's blue sky, and it's being mixed with the color of the ray that was shot and hitting the checkerboard. That's what the Fresnel's equation's doing. It's combining the reflections and the um, refractive light, and, that, and then you get a lovely um, uh, effect like that. While recursive ray tracing is very cool, these days it, uh, for real-time rendering you use a mix of rasterization for the parts of the scene that don't need to be recursively ray traced and then recursive ray tracing for, for things like the sphere and the reflections here. Like the checkerboard there is reflecting no light, no light's refracting. So why would, you, why would you need to use recursive ray tracing for that or ray casting when you can just rasterize it and it'll be a lot quicker. It's very good at um, representing how light uh, it works in the scene. It is not very good at doing indirect light and things like that, getting those really crisp images. And that can be done with path tracing, which is what I want to talk about in the next video. Is we shoot a ray out in our camera, it would hit the ground, and then we go, hang on, our sun is up here. And when we shoot a ray from the ground to the sun, there's an object in the way, I am in the way. So therefore, we know that that light cannot hit that surface. Therefore, we don't render anything.